thank you. So th I want to thank uh, Tanji and uh, Tanji and Monica for uh, organizing this uh, and inviting me. Um, so this is, uh, I would say, mainly the work of uh, of Rabbi Salab, who was a, a PhD student with uh, my colleague Roland Malamé and myself at Polytechnique, and then did a postdoc with Georges. So Georges is really the uh, expert in the area that I'm going to be talking about, which is so this area of marketing is a bit far from what I usually do. I'm more an engineer, but nonetheless, I, I'll try to present a, an accurate picture. Um, and so, so Rabi now is, is at uh, MIT, he moved to the US. So, <clears throat> so here is the, um, try to get the So here is the uh, the uh, the outline. Uh, I'm going to try to motivate the, the problem that we're looking at, uh, then present a mathematical model for it, and explain a little bit how we uh, solve the, the the problem, um, and then uh, hopefully with the remaining time illustrate a little bit the the, the results uh, through simulations. So. <clears throat> So, so basically, the motivation is uh, we're interested in in uh, in, uh, in decision problems that might be faced by by a firm. So the firm will be denoted here, firm zero, uh, and this firm is, is selling a product that we denote here, product zero. Um, now, uh, a firm, when trying to optimize its uh, its net revenue, can do basically uh, two things. It can uh, improve uh, its production side, the, the, the product, so for example, diminish, the, decrease the production cost, um, or it can uh, work on the other side and try to increase the demand for its product. Right. So for for that, it can uh, set a set a price. It can uh, it can choose a, a level of quality for the product, uh, and it can also uh, uh, choose, for example, uh, how much to how much to spend on on advertisement. So all these uh, the variables that are in in in, in orange here are uh, things that are under the control of the firm. So defining a decision problems, and there are also things that are not under the control of the firm. For example, the the competitive uh, outlook. Uh, you know the the type of products, for example, that, that compete with its uh, own product. Um, now, the literature on, the, uh, on this type of uh, problems is obviously extensive. In fact, there is more literature on this side on the production cost, but uh, there is also quite a bit of, um, sorry, quite a bit of literature on the other side here, and in particular on uh, choosing how, to, how much to advertise. Uh, so that uh, literature goes at least back to the uh, 50s and 60s. And in particular, I'm showing here a, a, a kind of a seminal paper by Nerlov and Arrow on where they basically set up uh, an optimal control problem to try to, uh, to uh, figure out how much uh, um, a company, a firm should invest in advertisement over time in order to kind of maximize its, its revenue. Okay. So here I'm, I'm also giving some other uh, references. Now, uh, so so this this literature is is still uh, this is still uh, quite active. Um, now there is another thing that can uh, shape demand, and this is uh, basically what people say about the product and how they talk uh, with each other uh, about the product. And nowadays, this uh, phenomenon is uh, is kind of amplified by the availability of, of websites that uh, aggregate uh, reviews of consumers. So now, rather than talking to just a few people, you can go online and basically have the opinion of a large population of consumers uh, before you uh, consume, the, before you choose which product to consume. Okay, so now because of the importance of these uh, online uh, review, these, these aggregate uh, reviews, there is also uh, obviously uh, quite a few people who have been looking at uh, this uh, phenomenon in the last uh, few years, uh, both through uh, case studies and, um, and, um, and models. And basically the, uh, the conclusion is that these, these online reviews uh, are, sign uh, are a significant part and uh, play a significant role in, in shaping the demand for a product. Okay, so so the research challenges that we are trying to uh, address broadly in this uh, in this uh, kind of research agenda 
uh, are to uh, try to see if we can basically uh, model mathematically um, um, uh, the uh, impact of uh, reviews, of online reviews, and maybe more, more generally social interactions in the way that they, sh in the way they, they, they shape demand so that firms can use these type of models to, uh, to try to define and optimize their marketing strategies. Um, now, because we're looking at how demand is shaped by social interaction, in these models, demand will need to be uh, to emerge endogenously from the from the model. It cannot be kind of an external uh, uh, variable that's given by by hypothesis. And one big challenge is that um, in trying to define a demand model like this, we'll have to take into account that there are a large number of large numbers of, of consumers basically that interact uh, in order to kind of create this, uh, this, this demand. Okay, so basically we'll, we'll have uh, kind of uh, interactions in, in, large, uh, in large populations and uh, we'll be doing approximations uh, using uh, mean, mean field games, <coughs> um, following the methodology of uh, of Huang, uh, Keynes, and, and Malamé, and which also and also Las Réunions uh, worked at, on, on these type of problems around the same time. Um, now, an, another challenge is that we we want to have to take into account the dynamic aspects of these problems. So, in particular, uh, the, the the reputation of a product uh, builds over time. So, it's it's hard to model these type of problems just by static uh, by static systems. Um, and there's a lot of coupling between uh, between uh, the so there is coupling obviously uh, between the problem of the firm which is tr trying to uh, optimize the revenue and the um, so and, and the consumer so the, the firm can set the price which has an impact on the consumer utility and in, in, in on the other hand the uh, consumers are the one shaping the demand for the product. So this will, this kind of bi-level uh, system will, will model via Stackelberger game. Um, now using the model, what we want to uh, see is we want to have a model that's tractable enough so that we can try to characterize and compute equilibria and ultimately obviously uh, compute, firm, compute strategies that, that help firm uh, set their various uh, decisions on, on pricing, on, on marketing, investment, and so on. Um, okay, so <clears throat> so he, let's go into the uh, mathematical prob uh, model that we uh, that we propose. So we'll be looking at a, a discrete time uh, uh, system, so over a finite horizon uh, capital T. Uh, we have this firm uh, zero selling the, the product zero and it can decide uh, it has a number of variables that it can set. So it can set the price at each time. So this P, PT of zero is the price of pr product zero at time T and there are uh, T prices, one for each uh, time period. I mean T minus one here because we don't, we, we won't care about the last period. Uh, and then it can also set uh, other things, uh, how much it wants to in uh, how much the firm wants to uh, spend on, on marketing in particular. Uh, in fact, we allow more generally uh, decision variables that take values in, so we, we might have D decision variables. Uh, this could be advertising, could be setting the, the quality of the product and so on. Um, and all these variables, the price and, uh, and, uh, and the decisions and marketing expenditures will be normalized so that they all lie in, in this interval zero one. Now for the firm, the firm wants to maximize its uh, total net revenue over time. So this total re net revenue is basically at each time period, the price multiplied by the demand. Now there is a parameter alpha here. Um, and uh, we, you need to subtract uh, how much it spends on, on marketing and so on. So this, this beta here is a function that we'll uh, assume to be increasing in each uh, coordinate of, of M. Okay. And we might also have uh, you know, constraints on these uh, marketing expenditures and, and prices. So for example, we might have a fixed budget for how much we want to spend uh, on, on marketing and also we can include here the fact that the prices have to be uh, positive. So I, I'm just going to keep that as an abstract set uh, of constraints C, but obviously in applications we'll, we'll have uh, specific uh, uh, forms of or for C in the form of, of equality and inequality constraints. 
Okay. Now, the, the difficult part of this is the demand here, which we want to focus on. So the demand itself is also shaped by the price and the marketing um, and the marketing decisions. Uh, you know, if you increase the price, the demand will decrease. And so that's what we want to uh, uh, to kind of model more uh, more accurately. And in particular, we want to take here into account this uh, this uh, phenomenon of, of word of mouth and, and online reviews. Okay, so how do we um, uh, do that? So, so before I go into the uh, actual uh, 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 demand model, uh, I want to explain a little bit uh, something about this literature on on uh, optimal advertising. Uh, for the so we want to model for the demand function the impact of these firm decisions on pricing and and marketing. So. Uh, here first, I'm going to we are going to follow a, a classical approach uh, introduced by that paper that I mentioned uh, before, uh, where so in that literature, people summarize tend to summarize the effect of over time of pricing and marketing decisions through some sort of abstract state variables that uh, that is called the goodwill. So you can think of it as the reputation of the product, and we assume here a known dynamics for this this reputation of the product. So for this goodwill variable. Okay, so it's kind of a state variables that allows you to not have to take in, to to keep track of all the past decisions of marketing and pricing, and all these past decisions are basically uh, summarized, if you will, in this goodwill uh, state variable. Okay, so the classical uh, uh, dynamics that people take often for the goodwill is simply. Uh, uh, linear dynamics where the goodwill would, uh, so, so that was the, the model introduced by Nerlov and Arrow, where the goodwill, the reputation would, uh, uh, would have a tendency to decrease through that uh, one minus delta factor here. And this represents the fact that people tend to forget about advertising over time. And then it's boosted by investment in, in, in advertise, advertisement and marketing. Okay, so that through that variable F. Now, uh, so so this this um, this literature also assumes, and, and I, in my opinion, it's a bit uh, it's a bit um, you know this, this good, that, that can be discussed discussed here that this goodwill is typically observable. Um, so we are also making, in some sense, this assumption, but here we're trying to sort of relax it a little bit by saying that the goodwill will be interpreted differently by consumers when they make their reviews. And so I, I'll, I'll be trying to explain that a bit more in the next uh, few slides. Okay, so in addition, we'll have, we, we need to have kind of a competitive environment in order to, uh, to uh, model the decisions of the firm. So we need, we, we're going to have another uh, product that, that we call product one, which is produced by some other uh, companies. However, we don't want to complicate the game too much here. So the other company or companies producing the product one will be non-strategic. So they will not try to compete directly with the product with the firm zero. Um, and so the price of the alternative based product will be known and fixed through time. You could take it as, 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 a, as a basic uh, version of the product that you, that you compete against. Uh, for which the price will not change and the goodwill will be also known. Okay, okay so now <coughs> um, let's talk a bit about uh, consumer ratings. So uh, our goal is will be to mo try to model the impact of consumer reviews uh, ultimately on, on, on the demand that is on, on the market share. So we will have a population of N capital N consumers and at each time step, they will consume uh, either product zero or product one. Okay. And they will also make, make uh, re repeated ratings. We assume that they also make repeated ratings uh, of these products uh, after they con consume them. Okay. So these ratings will be denoted uh, RIT. So if a consumer consumes uh, some product, so that the consuming decision is, is CIT here. So either it consumes at time t, so uh, consumer i consumes at time t either product zero or product one, and after that it pro provides a rating uh, R, uh, for the next period r t plus one i, and that rating will be uh, assumed to be again normalized between zero and one. Now, if the rating is close to zero, that means that the um, uh, consumer prefers product zero, and if the rating is close to one, it prefers the product one. 
Now, we're going to be assuming that essentially this rating is kind of a noisy version, a noisy observation, uh, a noisy version of the goodwill for the, for the corresponding product. So now, because, we, because of our normalizing uh, thing and, and our choice here, uh, what's happening is that if the goodwill of product zero is high, is close to one, we want a high rating, so we want a rating close to zero. Okay, we want a high rating for the product zero, so close to zero. So that's why we have this one minus G here. Uh, so the rating, if, if the consumer uh, consumes product zero, we'll have uh, the rating, it's gonna provide a rating, which is essentially one minus the goodwill, plus some noise, okay? And so, so this noise here represents um, basically some, um, some personal factors of the consumers that uh, make him uh, or her uh, not rate exactly at the goodwill, but it might have, you know, personal experience that differ from the kind of goodwill that represents the, 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 uh, the reputation at the, at the population level. Okay. Or it might, we can also use that variable here, the distribution and then variable to, to take into account the fact that some people will tend to, uh, to rate products fairly and some will be uh, harsher and some will be uh, more lenient. Okay. So we'll have, also the possibility of have uh, to have uh, types of types of, of customers uh, as i said some could be harsher uh, or, or or some could be fair and so on so you could model that through the distribution of the noise here okay. now if the uh, consumer consumes product 1 then it's going to rate around the goodwill of product 1 so now uh, if he likes the um, if the consumer likes product 1 so the and the goodwill is close to 1 so you want the rating to be close to one. So in that case, I have just G here plus some noise. Okay, so now <laughs> to understand, uh, to, to try to move towards the, uh, how demand emerges. Uh, so we need, uh, the consumers will have, we consume, we choose uh, which product to consume by uh, trying to optimize their own utility. Um, so we're going to assume here that each consumer I has a per stage utility. Um, so each consumer will be trying to maximize a utility over time as well, uh, consumption over time. Um, and the per stage utility will be assumed to be uh, driven uh, to be uh, uh, driven by, I mean, controlled by the, its own rating. So how much it's uh, rating? Sarah. <laughs> sorry. No, nope, go ahead. Sorry, I uh, I froze. So the utility will be controlled by its own rating and also the average rating, okay? And some other factors, so in particular, if the prices of the product is high, the uh, utility will, uh, will go down. If the goodwill is high, the, the utility will go up. So these, these terms here I'm not detailing, but obviously the utility will depend on, on these, these, these variables as well. But we'll be interested mostly in this part here. So <clears throat> to come back on this, so, the, the consumer when consuming, when choosing which product to consume, will go online and check, you know, what the uh, distribution of, of, of reviews is. And uh, here in this model, we assume kind of a, a, a very simple model where we say that the consumer will care only about the average review. So let's say you go on, on Amazon and you check, okay, this, this thing has 3.3 stars. So that's going to be my, what, uh, what, what we assume impacts the, the utility of the consumer. Okay, rather than the whole shape of the distribution. Okay, so, so that's the utility function. If it consumes uh, um, uh, product zero, if it consumes, if the consumer consumes one, then it's basically the same thing, except that instead of one minus R, we have R, just to take into account this, this, the, this fact that R is close to zero is, is, is uh, good for product zero and R close to one is good for product one. Okay, so that's uh, our cost function for each uh, individual. In fact, in the paper, we have a bit more complication in the cost functions. We can model brand lo loyalty by adding to the state the past the consumption decisions and so on, but I think it, it doesn't change the, the message uh, uh, too much. Okay, so note that through this uh, average rating, we have interaction, interaction between consumers. So the, the mass of consumers uh, has a large effect on each individual decision. Uh, through this R bar, and also each individual um, contributes to that average rating. So formally, we have some sort of game here, but a game with weak, weak coupling through the mean. Um, okay. Now, <coughs> so, um, so the, um, 
the uh, so so now going back to the decision of the, the problem of this uh, the decision problems for the firm. So if a firm chooses a certain uh, marketing and 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 um, and and price uh, trajectory, uh, it will essentially induce that game among uh, consumers when they choose which product to consume. And so the demand now we're we're arriving at uh, how the demand is shaped. The demand will be essentially the proportion of consumer. The demand for product zero will be essentially the proportion of of consumers who choose uh, when solving their own uh, their own control problem, their own optimization problem. Uh, so the number of the, the number of consumer choosing product zero. Okay. So the demand will be basically this one minus c bar, where c bar is is the average number of consumers. Um, so since C is, each CIT is between is either zero or one, uh, if you take this num this number here, it's, the, it's essentially the average number of, of consumers choosing product zero. Okay, and so <clears throat> to try to model the, the problem for the firm, we'll uh, we'll uh, look for a Stackelberg solution, where we're gonna say, okay, the firm will be announcing uh, its uh, marketing and price trajectory. And in announcing this marketing and price trajectory, it, be, it would be kind of anticipating the effect of this announcement on the consumers, okay? Uh, then the consumers will follow and play a Nash equilibrium uh, when trying to optimize their own utility. Uh, and that will realize the demand. Um, and note here that one thing we're doing, we will be doing here is look only for now for open loop Stackelberg solutions. So, um, basically, the firm will be announcing and committing to the whole sequence of prices over time, um, and the um, the consumers will be allowed to use this information um, in order to compute their uh, their their own decisions. So I'll come back to this. This is the, the, it would be preferable here to have feedback. I mean, a closed loop Stackelberg. Uh, but uh, so, but it's a bit uh, beyond what we can do uh, right at the moment. Um, so the, the goal of the firm obviously is to try to find this optimal uh, price and marketing trajectory that would ultimately maximize its 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 revenue. Okay, so uh, a few words on how we uh, can uh, uh, solve try to solve the game. So we we'll find a find a tractable way of solving this game. Um, so note that if I if 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 the firm is announcing their marketing and and pricing decisions, the goodwill trajectory will become known. So the the goodwill uh, will uh, become known through this because we assume known the the uh, dynamics of the goodwill. Um, <clears throat> so the only remaining uh, things that changing uh, th that changes to the problem is is the state of each agent. Uh, that is, and the state can be summarized basically by the most rating, the most recent rating that the agent gave. Okay, so uh, here I'm representing kind of the dynamics of the state for each agent. So an agent will consume, will choose to consume at time t minus one. So agent E at time t minus one will consume uh, product J, let's say. So J could be either zero or one. That will set uh, the rating. The rating will be a perturbed version version of the goodwill for product J. Uh, and then once uh, the rating has been um, uh, has been made, uh, it's all the ratings are aggregated to R bar, and then the next uh, consumption decision is decided by its previous rating and also R bar, as well as the the goodwill for the uh, two products and the prices for the two products. So that's that's how the state for each. Uh, state and decisions for each uh, agent uh, evolve. Okay, so each agent faces the problem of uh, optimizing a cost function, which is a sum over time of per stage cost function. And this cost function depends principally on its own consumption as decision variables, but a little bit also on the other people's uh, 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 decisions of choosing, uh, I mean, uh, choice choices. And how does that happen? It happens only through uh, the uh, average ratings that the uh, other uh, consumers make. Okay, so this is a game essentially in the sense that we have this cost function that depends on that, that has inter dependencies between players. However, the, 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 the interdependency is only through these weekly through these average ratings. Okay. So, uh, so that says that basically what we'll be doing for, for to obtain tractable solutions is do some sort of uh, mean field approximation and we'll be looking for uh, epsilon Nash uh, equilibria rather than uh, exact Nash. 
for this variant population game. So epsilon Nash again means that if we'll be looking for st consumption strategies for the consumers such that if they deviate a little bit from their, uh, if they deviate a little bit from the uh, uh, proposed uh, strategy, they can uh, gain a little bit, but not too much. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and so I, I said, so, so, so basically what's happening in, in the limit of, of a very large system, a very large number of players, um, each, uh, inf the influence of each consumer on R bar becomes, uh, becomes very small. And so essentially what's happening is the individuals become independent. And so by the law of large numbers, this R bar becomes essentially deterministic. Uh, and so we can, uh, we can use kind of a mean field game approach, which is more tractable than trying to solve the finite game problem uh, with a large, a large uh, F. Oh, excuse okay. me, Jerome. Yeah. So you yeah. have uh, five minutes. So. Yeah, okay. So, uh, if uh, so, so just a few words about how the uh, mean field game uh, uh, methodology works um, to remind you. So, basically, what we do is uh, we assume we, we, we kind of uh, take an iterative approach where we assume that this uh, f we assume first that this average uh, rating trajectory is known. And then, if, if I assume that this average trajectory uh, of ratings is known, I can try to find the best response for each consumer. Okay. Um, in a sense, we decouple in that, in that case completely the uh, optimization problems for each consumer. Then we can set uh, um, uh, an optimal control problem now for each consumer. So each consumer will have a, a Benman equation to solve if you want, which will be uh, uh, its, uh, its uh, per stage cost plus the expected value function. And we can show easily here for the type of uh, value of, of per stage cost that we chose that the uh, uh, consumption policy, the optimal consumption policy will be a threshold policy where basically if the rate, if the previous rating was close to zero, was sufficiently close to zero, you will be choosing to consume product zero. And if, um, if the rating was close to one, you will choose to consume uh, product one at the next stage. And that's, that threshold here will be depending on the average uh, trajectory that we assume known for that. Okay. And then in the MFG uh, methodology, so we need to iterate. Uh, once we know an optimal, an optimal uh, policy for each, we can figure out essentially based on this, uh, the, this, known, uh, this known policy for each, we can figure out the proportion of, of uh, consumers that will choose product zero. Okay. Uh, now, if we can, uh, and so we can also compute the average uh, rating of consumers uh, when they respond to this uh, uh, hypothetical known uh, uh, R bar. Uh, and then, well, then you need to look for a, for a fixed point uh, because you want that the average uh, rating reproduces the one that you uh, that you assumed from the beginning uh, when you were computing this best response. Okay, so looking for this uh, uh, fixed point here for the uh, MFG uh, corresponds to basically finding a Nash equilibrium for the uh, infinite population. Um, so we have a theorem that says that basically for the, the problem that we have, uh, there is, uh, there is a, a Nash equilibrium for the uh, infinite population system. We have also a, a, what we typically want is to prove that if we apply the, strate the, the, the strategy for the infinite population game to the finite population game, we don't we, we have epsilon Nash with an epsilon that kind of decreases with n. So we, we have we have that. I'm not going through the uh, details here of all the factors, but we have the typical uh, rate at which uh, this epsilon n converges to zero in the approximation. And uh, we have in we have in we have also shown that in some cases um, the uh, uh, we have in fact contraction in the iterates from R bar to the next R bar, which allows us to say that in some cases we know that the Nash equilibrium will be uh, unique, uh, and we can use fixed point iterations to converge to this R bar. Okay. And now <coughs> for the for the firm problem. Now, what's the problem for the firm? You want to uh, maximize this utility for the firm, but now the demand will be realized through this by solving this Nash, this Nash game. Okay, so the Stackelberg game will involve uh, solving this uh, uh, this uh, Nash game through mean field games, uh, in order to compute this uh, this optimal uh, uh, the optimal strategy for the for the, for the firm. 
Okay, so I'm not going, uh, so I just uh, had a few things about how we solve this, but let's, let me skip this. And uh, maybe in the interest of time, I'm gonna uh, skip the simulation results that uh, you can uh, find in the papers. We, we take a, a, a standard kind of uh, models uh, and we try to add this, uh, this, uh, this review uh, effect. And uh, you know, we can illustrate uh, various, uh, various dynamics, uh, uh, various quite interesting dynamics on, on goodwill and, on, and how prices should be set uh, when we take this into account as well. Okay, so let me just uh, finish this and say that uh, in ongoing work includes, uh, as I said, so trying to do uh, feedback Stackelberg and also maybe having uh, multiple uh, strategic Nash producers. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Jérôme. Uh, so maybe, yeah, we have time for one very short question if somebody wants to ask one. Um, that's why I send something in the chat. Um, uh, I have a oh sorry. yeah, go ahead, Monique. <laughs> a, a short one, hopefully. Um, so when you uh, here on the conclusion slide, you mentioned competition between multiple strategic Nash producers. So that would be um, at the top level, you would have a competitive environment and then at the at the sub level there will still be consumers now take into into consideration the multiple uh yeah producers. Exactly. okay yeah it's following the i mean uh, in that literature people started initially by looking at one producer and solving optimal control and then looking at uh, marketing in equilibria when you have nash producers and now we add one more level below where we model the consumers and, and Thank you. 